A very good evening. This is Sky News Tonight with me, Dermot Monaghan, live from Westminster, where the Prime Minister today stared into the abyss and decided to take a step back. Despite Cabinet Ministers insisting this morning that tomorrow's vote on Theresa May's withdrawal deal would still take place tomorrow, she stood up in the House of Commons this afternoon and said it was being delayed. She conceded that as things stood, she would lose the vote by a large margin and that instead she'll travel to Europe in an effort to try to renegotiate the biggest sticking point, that is, of course, the Irish backstop, so-called. Her first trip will apparently be to the Netherlands to speak to Prime Minister Mark Rutte. Well, coming up, we'll talk about an emergency debate on Brexit that uh, Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party have requested. It should take place tomorrow. But first, our deputy political editor, Beth Rigby, reports. It was meant to be one of the biggest moments in modern British history, the week in which Parliament would decide whether to back Mrs May's Brexit deal. But instead, the Prime Minister pulled the vote. The scale of the defeat and what it could unleash, in the end, too big a risk to take. It is clear that while there is broad support for many of the key aspects of the deal, on one issue, on one issue, the Northern Ireland backstop, there remains widespread and deep concern. As a result, if we went ahead and held the vote tomorrow, the deal would be rejected by a significant margin. A painful admission punctuated with a heartfelt plea to her Brexiteers too. Even though I voted Remain, from the moment I took up the responsibility of being Prime Minister of this great country, I've known that my duty is to honour the result of that vote. I am determined to do all I can to secure the reassurances this House requires, to get this deal over the line and deliver for the British people. But the division and anger on all sides of the House that convinced the Prime Minister this vote isn't worth holding was plain to see. The deal damages our economy, and it isn't just the opposition saying that. The government's own analysis shows this deal would make us worse off. If the Prime Minister cannot be clear that she can and will renegotiate a deal, then she must make way. But the thing that is changing is the view of the British people. No, it's not. No, it's not. I know it's nearly the pantomime season, but oh yes, it has. <laughs> Mrs Thatcher had a word for it. What she's done today, F R I T. She's fricked. What the heck is going on? This is a complete and utter cluster burner. Why is she more concerned with her own self preservation and narrow party unity than the lives and livelihoods of my Livingston constituents? How dare she postpone this vote just because she was going to lose? The U-turn had been expected since the morning, a last-minute cabinet conference call all but confirming the rumours swirling around the media village that the vote was to be delayed, to the relief of some senior party figures. I think it's very positive that uh, if there's a little bit more space and an effort to get that, uh, we might get this through the House. A hugely embarrassing U-turn for the Prime Minister, but many in her cabinet felt she had no choice in the face of that inevitable defeat, leading to the possible collapse of her government or her premiership. But the big question remains, can she get enough from Brussels to get this deal across the line in the House of Commons, or is she simply delaying the inevitable? It looks very difficult at the moment. It looks as if the motion, had it been brought forward tomorrow, would have failed by quite a margin. And it's hard to see how many people will change their mind unless there's a really big renegotiation, which the Prime Minister a few days ago said was impossible. Mrs May is off to Brussels tomorrow to try to win more concessions on the backstop. Her meaningful vote could now be delayed until the new year. A critical, possibly terminal vote avoided, for now, but little festive respite to be had for this deeply embattled PM. Beth Rigby, Sky News. Well, uh, in the last few minutes, uh, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has asked for and actually been granted now an emergency debate on Brexit tomorrow in the House of Commons. Uh, this is what he said. 
Neither the Prime Minister nor the Leader of the House have confirmed the date for the conclusion of the debate or the votes. This shows a disregard for Parliament and the rights of this House, as well as of the 164 members who have spoken in the debate or those who are planning to do so. Once again, the decisions of Parliament are being ignored. It is clear, as the Prime Minister admitted in her statement, that she decided to avoid a heavy defeat on her deal in Parliament tomorrow. Again, Parliament has been given no opportunity to express its view on her negotiations. Jeremy Corbyn there, well our Chief Political Correspondent John Craig is here with me. Some more drama in the House tonight after the drama of the Prime Minister's announcement. Yes, not just Mr Corbyn's uh, uh, application for a, a, what's called an SO24, Standing Order 24, an emergency Better debate, translate. Yeah, thank three you. hours debate before they get on to the Ivory Bill, most important, um, tomorrow. Uh, but also what's being described as uh, mace-grabbing drama. Now, you remember the last week a Labour MP called uh, Lloyd Russell Moyle mm -hmm. uh, was in the news for admit announcing in a uh, Commons debate that he was HIV positive, I think I've got that yep. right. Well, he got very angry tonight and he grabbed the mace, kicked out of the Commons by Mr Burko, only suspended for the rest of the day though, which is only about half an hour now, they're on the adjournment debate. Just grabbing the mace, well, a few famous people have done that over the Michael years. Heseltine. It hasn't done their careers any harm. <laughs> yes. Michael Heseltine yeah. and John McDonnell. Mm. Um, so, uh, anyway, we had some a, a flourish okay. of drama at the Sign end. Sign of the anger there. But, but yes. what, what about this debate? End of an so, extraordinary day. I mean, so what format will this debate be in? The Prime Minister will be away, we understand. Yeah. She's, uh, she's going to The Hague Holland. to start with and uh, then on to Brussels, we understand. Uh, yes, yeah, she's, well, she's doing quite a bit of travelling over the next few days. Um, it's basically, it's a gesture by Labour. Uh, they're just wanting to inflict some in, more embarrassments on the government. Um, I mean, what has happened today is we've seen a, a humiliating retreat in the face of what was due to be a pretty big defeat for the Prime Minister in the vote tomorrow. Looked like she was heading for a defeat by more than 100 votes, potentially bringing her Premiership to an end. So they decided, let's play for time, she'll go back to Brussels, and uh, of course there was anger from not just opposition MPs, but some Tory MPs as well. We heard uh, one uh, Eurosceptic, Marc Francois, during the statement mm. by uh, Andrea Leadsom announcing the change in business, accusing ministers of hiding in the toilets. and. Anger from Tory Eurosceptics, anger from all those people who've spoken, 164, yeah. Mr Burko said, during the debate so far. So Labour obviously thought, right, we'll get our own back, we've got, in the, we've got the numbers well, to get an emergency debate tomorrow. I mean, with Symbolic, a, with, we, Exactly, but with all that anger, and, you know, I talked to a couple of Brexiteers uh, tonight, uh, Crispin Blonto and Patterson, saying, well, it changes nothing, the Prime Minister won't get anything substantial from the European Union, we all know that, and she'll come back at some point, she has to put this to the House again, and she's still going to lose. That's the view not just of those Brexiteers, but the Labour Party as well, who've announced that they will not put down an emergency uh, debate, uh, a motion of no confidence, I beg your pardon, in the government yet. They're going to wait until she comes back because they think they've got a better chance now. Nicola Sturgeon was goading Labour today to do it now, but they're not doing that. Um, and uh, the DUP don't think it'll make any difference either. The Prime Minister will be hoping. All the signs are, It'll be in the new year, this vote. Parliament's back on right. the 7th of January. They've got to do it before the 21st of January, and the Prime Minister more or less said they would do that. She's playing for time, isn't she? Yeah. Um, she's uh, set to lose. She obviously thinks more time to work on Tory backbenchers, more time to work on the DUP. But the signs tonight are all her attempts to persuade them are not doing any well, good, uh, and there's no... Uh, MPs are very sceptical to get a better deal. And it's good to think back, you know, just about ten days or so, when you and I would stand here and say, well, what is the Prime Minister up to? We knew even then that there were so many stacked against the withdrawal deal. What's she doing calling these days of debate and then the meaningful vote? She's only going to lose. But she did it. Remember, she went on the tour around the yeah. country. We all thought she had some kind of cunning plan. It turned out she didn't. Well, she had a plan, but it didn't work. Um, she, <laughs> Not remember, cunning she, as you say, she went to Wales, she went to Northern Ireland, she went to Scotland. There were newspaper interviews. She appeared on Sophie Ridge on Sunday. Uh, there was. Uh, a big campaign to try and persuade not just MPs, but local party activists. There was a reception in Number 10 the other night, but it hasn't worked. 
nobody, hardly any, apart from real ultra loyalists, they're the only ones seem to be supporting her. Now, will the waverers come round? That's what she'll be hoping, but on the evidence so far, unlikely. Okay, John, thank you very much indeed. Our chief political correspondent, John Craig, there.